welcome to highlights of the 1991 Mexican Grand Prix brought to you by Microprose and GP2 Joey. We're in Mexico City for round six of the season at the 2.7 mile Autodromo Hermanos Rodriguez circuit in what is turning into a thrilling season of Grand Prix motor racing. McLaren's Alain Prost has won the last two races in Monaco and Canada and the four-time champ will be looking to make it three victories this weekend and he leads the driver's standings on 36 points with Williams Renault's Nigel Mansell second and Ferrari star Ayrton Senna 20 points adrift in third. McLaren hold a 19 point lead in the constructor standings over Williams with Ferrari in third place. In the news leading up to the race, Mansell's teammate Sean Alacy was under severe pressure to turn his poor start to the season around as Williams management openly said his performances were simply not good enough. Benetton boss Flavio Briatore openly criticised his driver Derek Warwick for colliding with his teammate Nelson Piquet in Canada. Elsewhere, drivers got their first taste of the revamped Silverstone in a tyre test and Senna proclaimed the next bunch of races would be critical to his title hopes. Whilst Alacy confirmed he was nervous ahead of the race weekend. News then broke that Prost was close to buying the Ligier team for 1992 in a bid to create a French national squad with Renault engines, but the Frenchman strongly denied the rumours. As usual, Friday morning's pre-qualifying session was simply close throughout, with only a few tenths of a second separating many as drivers all fought to control their cars over the notoriously bumpy circuit. With barely any time to make any significant setup changes, drivers had to more or less drive with what they had turned up with. In the end though, it was once again the Minardi pair of Pierluigi Martini and Gianni Morbidelli who topped the timing screens as the team progressed further into the race weekend and were joined by LaRousse and Brabham, who both looked strong throughout and the others were forced to pack up their transporters and go home. Having unearthed some performance from his McLaren Honda during the recent tyre test at Silverstone, Britain's Joey Davis was in scintillating form, taking Friday's provisional pole easily. Down at Ferrari, Senna was struggling in the glorious 642, which was clearly demonstrating a strong distaste for the bumps, whilst Davis's McLaren teammate Frost was also struggling for speed as the Frenchman fought to keep his car under control. For Davis, though, Saturday was far from perfect after the 26-year-old lost it entering the dauntingly fast Peralta curve at over 190 miles an hour and slamming into the outside retaining wall. Thankfully, he was somehow unhurt in the crash and ended up taking his first pole since the European Grand Prix back in September last year. John Alacy was a fine second ahead of Mansell in third for Williams, whilst at the back it was the unfortunate Leighton House of Maurizio Guzman and the Brabham of Damon Hill who failed to qualify. Afterwards, F1 doctor Sid Watkins declared Davis to be very fortunate to have escaped any injury, whilst the Britons simply shifted his focus onto winning the race, and Williams declared their expectations for Alacy to continue his strong performance and beat Mansell, who was also focused on the top step of the podium. So it's Davis and Alessi on the front row with Mansell and Senna on row two. Row three is Alain Prost and Michael Andretti. Row four is Martin Brundle and Johnny Herbert. Row five is Derek Warwick and Nelson Piquet. Row six is Ricardo Patrese and Gerhard Berger. Row seven is De Cesaris and Stefano Modena. Row eight is Bertrand Gascho and Ivan Capelli. Row nine is Satoru Nakajima and Mika Hakkinen. Row ten is Gianni Morbidelli and Thierry Boutsen. Row eleven is Eric Bernard and Mark Blundell. Row twelve is Eric Kovas and Pierre Luigi Martini. And at the back it's Martin Donnelly and Aguirre. Suzuki. The revs are up as the red lights come on and the Mexican Grand Prix is go! Davis makes a very poor start away from pole position. He gets bogged down with a lot of wheel spin and Sean Lacey jumps into the lead with Nigel Manson in close attendance. So the two Williams catapult into the lead with Joey Davis in third on the run down to the first corner. Michael Andretti's got ahead of Senna with Herbert in sixth. Prost is down to seventh. Brundle is eighth and Derek Warwick is ninth as they come into the breaking for the first turn. It's Manson on the inside. Senna's trying to get past his teammate, but it's Nigel Manson who takes the lead into turn one. And Davis sneaks underneath. Sean Lacey. Davis is back up into second place, having dropped to third. Fantastic couple of quarters for Manson and Joey Davis. And Lacey drops from first down to third. And Tretti's managed to hold off Senna. But Davis is having a look at Manson into the left hand and he can't get through there. Mantle keeping the racing line. Davis is going to try and see if he can get it into the slower right hand hairpin that's just coming up, but he can't. Sean Alacy makes a late dive up the inside, and Alacy's back underneath Davis now. 
So it's Mansell ahead of Jean Alesi, his teammate, with Davis in third. It's Andretti fourth. Senna's down to fifth. Herbert sixth. Prost is seventh. Brundle is still eighth. Warwick is ninth. PK is tenth. Fantastic couple of corners from the two Williams drivers as Alesi looks as though he's coming under increasing pressure from Joey Davis with Michael Andretti making a good start as well. Senna not so good. He's dropped down a position to fifth place, but I'm pretty sure that the Brazilian will be looking to try and make his move. And Alesi's going to try and get past Nigel Mansell into the Peralta to curb. Is he going to be able to get through? We're on board with Mansell now. 175 miles an hour. Alesi can't find a gap through there. And he, he just loses a little bit of time. And that gives Joey Davis the chance to get right up on the Frenchman's gearbox. But is Davis going to be able to do anything about it? Alexis has got a good slipstream from Nigel Mansell as they come over the line for the first time. The two Ferraris are battling each other in the background as well. It's Alexi, it's Mansell. They're side by side on the run down to the first turn at 195 miles an hour, 200 miles an hour. Davis is right with them. Alexi goes for the inside and he's through. And Mansell just lets Davis sneak underneath them as well. And Senna's past Andretti. And Brundle passes Alain Prost from the looks of it. Great manoeuvre from the Englishman Martin Brundle as Johnny Herbert drops down to eighth place. But here's Davis on the attack. He's trying to get underneath Sean Alesi. He can't do anything about it there. Alesi just blocks to the inside. Davis just runs alongside the Frenchman. Davis is going to try and sling, sling it up the inside into the Peralta curve and do what Alesi did to Mansell. And he's through. So Joey Davis having started on pole position, he's finally got himself back into the front of the pack as he exits the Peraltada curve and he is at least two tenths of a second ahead of Alesi. Great overtaking manoeuvre there from Joey Davis with Nigel Manson in third. He's still hanging on, but it looks as though the footwork of Martin Brundle is making a move on Michael Andretti. Here we are. Brundle, he can't get anything done there as Alain Prost. He's going to try and see if he can get in on the action here. With Jean Alesi now half a second behind Joey Davis as Prost looks in so he just about manages to avoid contact with Michael Andretti as he passes Martin Brundle. That is a quite superb manoeuvre from the four-time world champion. Quite brilliant piece of driving. Absolutely fantastic driving from Prost. He's now up into sixth place and he's, he's, he's going to try and pass Andretti into the tight left-hander. He's through. Prost, he passes two cars in two corners. Fantastic driving from the Frenchman. But back up front, it's Mansell trying to close the gap on Jean Alesi, who's pressuring Joey Davis once more. He's closed the gap up, and Senna's under attack now from Prost. As they run up to the final curve now, is Prost going to try and make a move? I think he is. He runs underneath Senna. He's on the right-hand side. He's going to slip it up the inside, and he's through. And Alain Prost has gone from 7th to 6th to 5th to 4th in less than one lap. Mark Blundell slowly slowing. Mark Blundell seems to be out in the Brabham, and that's such a shame for the uh, for the Middlebridge Racing squad. He was the only driver out of himself and Damon Hill who actually managed to qualify for the race. And that's Alacy going through. Alacy passes Davis for the lead. Fantastic. He really closed the gap up on Joey Davis, and now Jean Alacy's back into the lead. And the Frenchman who's had a very difficult start to these 1991 campaign. He's had at least four accidents in six, uh, five accidents in five, in six races, and he is desperately trying to make a good account of himself today because Williams are really putting the pressure on him and they very much want him to try and perform well today and see if he can at least get on the podium and if possible, even take the race win. But he's got Joey Davis all over his gearbox now with Alain Prost. He's passed Nigel Mansell, unseen by us on the TV screens. We haven't quite seen it, but Prost, he's back ahead of Nigel Mansell. And Davis nearly loses it through the S's. And he's fully on the gas now. He's going to try and see if he can do something with Sean Alexi. He's weaving about all over the gearbox of the Frenchman, but he can't do anything about it there. And Alexi blocks the inside. Davis, he's not going to try what he did last year. He's going to try and go around the outside, and he's done it. My goodness, Joey Davis has screamed past Sean Alexi in a copybook manoeuvre of what he did to Alain Prost last year when Davis was driving for Williams at the same point on the same circuit. But Alesi is coming back again. Davis takes the inside line. He's gone defensive on the inside. Alesi has gone to the outside. Is he going to be able to do anything about it? Enter the braking zone for the first turn. He can't do anything about it. Davis has completely covered the racing line. 
and John Alesi has to yield position with Prost closing in third place. Fantastic racing here. This is quite superb. Davis and Sean Alesi as one of the footworks looks to be going underneath Michael Andretti and that's Martin Brundle I think who's just gone past Michael Andretti. And back up front it's Prost. Prost going to try and make a move on Sean Alesi if he can get through. Is it going to be a McLaren 1-2? What a fantastic development this is. Alain Prost is through as Thierry Boots and nearly loses control of his niche. Yet. And obviously the pre-race news has all been about Alain Prost possibly purchasing the niche team as we see Gasho in broad in a right ding-dong of a battle with what looks like Gerhard Berger in the Jarvis Porsche as Michael Andretti comes into the pits. But we're back on board with Prost and he's battling with Alessi once again. As Alessi goes through, he's up into second place. Fantastic stuff. Davis is in the lead by half a second, but Alacy and Prost, they are in, brought in a proper battle with Senna in fifth place. It's Nigel Mansell who we're riding on board with now in fourth place. And Prost is going to try and make a move on Davis. Is he through? Davis just cuts right across. They almost bang wheels in the braking zone, but Davis just vehemently cut across the Frenchman and he says, Absolutely not. You're not coming through here. But Alacy will not give up. John Alessi definitely seems to have burned a little bit of fire in his engine. And speaking of fires in the engines, that's Mansell. Nigel Mansell's Williams Renault is on fire and he is out. Sensational development as Prost comes in for his first tyre stop. It's Prost into the pits with Alessi in second. Prost is going to drop down behind and there's Joey Davis and Sean Alessi in second place. But Senna, he is miles behind in the Ferrari. And we understand that Senna and Ferrari have opted to run the very hard C compound tyre and they are only planning to stop once today as we ride on board with Mika Hakkinen who lets one of the McLarens come through. That's Joey Davis who's lapping the Lotus. I think that Sean Alexi is very much going to have to try and battle his way through as well because otherwise he's going to lose a colossal amount of time. And look at this! It's Davis and Alexi. They're side by side. Sean Alexi retakes the lead and Davis tries to get in the slipstream. He's going to go to the inside. He's going to run alongside the pit wall. It did three abreast now with the Ligier of Eric Comas on the outside. But Davis has got the inside line. He's going to take the lead back from Sean Alexi. And he's got to try and break in time, and he does. He avoids the LaRousse. And there's Ayrton Senna, who is yet to make his tyre stop. I can't believe the TV cameras have cut away from the race lead. Just to look at Senna, he's distant third place. Martin Brundle is fourth. And Joey Davis and Alessi, they're into the pits at the same time. Davis is on the marks, the brakes are on. A little wipe of the visor from the chief mechanic. It's sensational that both Williams and McLaren have hit it at the same time. But who's going to get out first? It's a good stop from Joey Davis's pit crew. It's 10 seconds and Alacy's still in there. I think Alacy must have had some sort of an issue. But Joey Davis has rejoined and Prost almost hits the back of Thierry Boots' Ligier. Fantastic stuff. Prost, he's behind Johnny Herbert and Martin Brundle as the two footworks are up into second and third place. With Eric, uh, with Ayrton Senna in the lead as we watch Eric Comas's Ligier. Fantastic racing. Eric Comas is driving very well in the Ligier and it would be a real, I think it would be a fantastic thing to see Alain Prost actually purchase this team because they're going nowhere at the moment and perhaps Alain Prost is the only man who can actually lead that team somewhere as we look at Ricardo Patrese. Speaking of people who are going nowhere, there's Ricardo Patrese. But here's, that's Martin Brundle. Martin Brundle's lost a part of his front wing. And Brundle's lost part of his front wing. He's going to have to come into the pits. My goodness me. We ride in car with Brundle. And he almost takes out three drivers simultaneously. Trying to get into the pits. And there's Gasho. Bertrand Gasho in the glorious Jordan. Trying to get past. I think that was Martin Donnelly. But there's Joey Davis. He's back in the lead now. And Gasho and Donnelly. They're still at it. It's Gasho ahead of Martin Donnelly. And that's Sean Alacy trying to get past there to Senna who's yet to stop, and Alacy's through. But it's McLaren 1-2 one, once again, with Joey Davis in first. And there's Sean Alacy up into second place. Senna's in third place, and Prost has stopped once more. He's made another tyre stop. Martin Brundle's in fifth. Michael Andretti is dropping back. He's in sixth position. And there's Nelson Piquet, and Ricardo Patrese squabbling over seventh place. That's Derek Warwick, sorry. 
Derek Warwick trying to get past Ricardo Patrese. Great place as Joey Davis rounds the corner. It's going to be interesting to see what happens between Patrese and Warwick. And obviously Derek Warwick is not in the good books of Flavio Briatore at the moment after he almost took out both himself and Nelson Piquet and he actually, in Canada. And he ruined Nelson Piquet's car who was unable to get a decent finish. But he got a decent one at the same time. But Derek Warwick, he's been lauded over the coals from Flavio Briatore. I don't think that uh, there's a rumour going around that I've heard that Derek Warwick very well may not be at the Benetton team for very much longer. In fact, I've heard as Ayrton Senna comes into the pits to make his first stop that Derek Warwick might not even be in the car come Silverstone for the eighth round of the championship. As Nakajima comes into the pits, we watch Martin Brundle in sixth place with Senna into the pits and Jean Lacey in third place. He's desperately trying to close the gap up to the McLaren 1-2s of Joey Davis and Alain Prost, his teammate. Joey Davis has been sensational since first practice on Friday morning. And Senna's going to try and pass Andretti. Senna's going to try and pass his teammate to get the lead. As Andretti wants to come into the pits and they almost touch. But Senna wasn't letting him get in. And I think that there's a, obviously a bit of radio communication issues there that prevented uh, Andretti from coming into the pits. As Davis struggles to get past the Minardi of Martini and Gasho's Jordan. And that's going to give Alessi a real chance to close up the gap who's already made his tire stop. Joey Davis hasn't made his second one. And there's a car stop. We're not sure who that was, but there's a Lacey in second place. 37 seconds behind Joey Davis. Is he going to be able to do anything about it? Is he going to be able to close the gap and take his very first win in Grand Prix racing? Or is Joey Davis going to take his first win for McLaren today? It's going to be sensational trying to watch them. And Joey Davis is into the pits for his final stop. It's going to be interesting to see now. Is he going to be able to, as the car slows there, that's one of the LaRusses. I think that might be a Guri Suzuki. Where is Davis going to come out? It's going to be interesting to see as these teammate, that's a Guri Suzuki, as Eric Bernard passes him and goes on to complete another lap. It's sensational, Davis. Now he's made a stop for Sean Alacy. Alacy is only 3.4 seconds and he is closing on, in, on the McLaren. In Alacy and the Williams, he is pushing like crazy, trying to close the gap up to race leader Davis as Davis passes Martini yet again. And Davis is only 2.6 seconds now. Alacy is closing the gap. It's Frost in third, it's Senna in fourth with Andretti fifth. Brundle is in sixth place with Derek Warwick now ahead of his teammate Nelson Piquet in eighth place. Gichesaris is ninth with Nakajima in 10th place in the Tyrrell. As Alacy continues to push, he's less than one second behind Davis. Is he going to be able to do enough to close the gap up and possibly wrestle the lead away from the Briton? As Senna passes one of the Minardis now and he passes the already stopped Brabham of Mark Brundell. And here's Sean Alacy. He's going to make a move. Davis is going to try and defend the position, but I think he's done it too late. Alacy's going to go for the outside, for the inside. And he's through. Alacy's into the lead as Davis pulls back. And is Davis going to try his trademark undercut? He does very much later on the brakes. And he carries enough speed through. Alacy has to get out of the throttle. And Davis retakes the lead. Fantastic stuff. What fantastic racing from these two. All race long as Alacy looks to have another go at Davis, who protects the inside line for the left-hander. He's going to force Alacy around the outside, which is the longer route, but he can't make it stick. And Alacy's going to still try and get it around the right-hander, and possibly into the next right-hander, which is the very slow one, which is where he took the, the position away from Davis earlier in the race. But he can't do it, and that's Warwick yet again. He retired with a similar issue in Canada last time out, and Derek Warwick's Benetton board has expired, and he is out. And Joey Davis, he manages to negotiate one of the Tyrrells, but Alessi has dropped now nearly 1.5 seconds behind, and he can't do anything about it as Prost goes over, comes out of the peril Tarda, and he's across the line, a distant third place, he's closing the gap though, but Andrea de Cesar is in eighth place in the Jordan, but look at the top, Alessi, he's less than half a second behind Joey Davis now. And Bertrand Gasho has got both of them. As Davis desperately trying, that's the chest, sorry. He's got both Davis and Alacy desperately trying to close the gap as Davis passes him before the barrel tarder curve. Is Alacy going to be able to do anything about it? I'm not sure he's going to be able to do it. And Prost! Prost is slowing! Alain Prost is slowing! He's got, he's got a suspension failure. And my goodness me, with only a lap and a half to go, Alain Prost is out. The McLaren driver is out.
That's such a shame for him, and that means to say that if Davis or Alessi can win, that's going to massively eat into the gap that, that, that Prost has got as Alessi looks to try and close up on Jerry Davis now. But I'm not sure if he's going to be able to do anything about it. Smith Center in third place, and Tretzi in fourth, Brundle fifth, and Prost. He's in sixth place, but is he going to be able to get across the line, or is PK going to be able to get out ahead of him? as Davis enters the corner for the final time. Joey Davis enters the Peralta curb. The marshals are waving their flags. He goes over to the pit wall, and Joey Davis wins the Mexican Grand Prix. Fantastic race. What a drive from the Briton, with Alessi a fine second in the Williams with Senna. Where's Senna? He's 16 and a half seconds behind. There he is, Senna. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's going to be quite satisfied with that result. But he takes third place. But Joey Davis will be absolutely beside himself. Look at that. He's doing the donuts. What a performance from Davis. Fantastic drive from Joey Davis. Absolutely fantastic. And what a Grand Prix. As ever, Davis once again proves himself to be one of the best racers after a superb debut win for McLaren. And Alessi will surely find some respite from the precious mounting of Williams after his fine second place ahead of Ferrari Senna and Andretti in fourth with Brundle a distant fifth and PK a lucky sixth after Prost's late retirement. On the podium, Davis sprayed the winner champagne and thanked his team for their support whilst Alessi was pleased but more frustrated to have finished second after missing out on a possible first win. Senna was angry to be a distant third after what he viewed as a lackluster performance from his Ferrari team. Davis's win now puts him third in the driver's standings, only 13 points behind Prost, who still leads despite his non-finish, with Mansell staying second, and McLaren further extend their lead in the Constructors' Championship to 23 points over Williams, and Ferrari stay third, 31 points off the top. So Davis becomes the fourth different winner this year and seems to have finally unlocked some speed. But can he continue his form into the next race at the all-new Manly Core circuit? Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time for round seven of the 1991 Formula One World Championship in France.